Okay. Case five. 50 year old man with an ulcerated firm nodule on the shin. Uh, this one is so fun. I really like it. Anyone want to tell me what this is? We had a tough time with this one. We thought maybe there's two things going on oh. at the same time. Uh huh. Very good. Uh, maybe something overlying a DF, uh, but something malignant, but we weren't entirely sure what that malignant thing may be. Maybe something uh, glandular. So, the I'm trying to turn my screen here, the little zoom window's in the way. There we go. This is great. So let's leave, we'll leave the cancer for a minute. You're right, that's a cancer, it's a carcinoma. It's not quite as fascinating as you might think, but still, it's fascinating because of where it's growing. Here we got a nice example of dermatofibroma. Spindle cells, uh, most of them bland, some a little bit bigger. This one has a nice kind of story form pattern. We always talk about story form pattern as being the key thing for dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans, but I see dermatofibromas with nice swirly, whirly story form pattern all the time. And that's one of those times if you're having trouble and you can't see the fat underneath, you can always add a CD34 stain on for cases like this. Some people like factor 13A as a positive marker. You know, CD34 will be negative in DF, although it's often positive at the periphery, but in, in, a, in the middle, it'll be negative. DFSP will be strongly, diffusely 34 positive, almost the vast majority of times with rare exceptions. So um, in times where I can't like see the fat and, and tell, you know, or if I'm having trouble, especially on the ones that are like bland, spindly DFs with lots of swirly, whirly story form, 34 can be really helpful. I find 34 much more helpful than factor 13A. I think factor 13A stains lots of stuff, really nonspecific, and um, I just don't find it as useful. But I know a lot of really good dermatopathologists who like it, and that's cool, but I don't tend to use it for spindle cell tumors, really. Occasionally, I use it for sebaceous tumors if you have the right clone, but that's a different topic for another day. So what we have above the dermatofibroma is this blue stuff. So what is this? Anyone? What are you going to do with these blue basaloid stuff right over a DF? Follicular induction? Yeah, exactly. This is the follicular induction phenomenon. Some dermatofib dermatofibromas in general tend to have exert this weird effect. I don't know cytokines or what causes it exactly. I just know what it looks like. It makes the epidermis grow. So what it often shows up as is this, elongation of the reedy ridges. Oftentimes they get flat at the bottom or what we call tabling. Uh, this one's not really doing that. I guess, well, there's a little tabling over here, a little bit of flattening. And you know, my former fella, Gina Johnson, who uh, is another um, Emory alumnus at her pathology residency there, she always said that they're these are tables and chairs. I'm not exactly sure what the chairs are, but I, I thought it was cute and I like that. So I always say these are the tables and chairs of, of Gina Johnson um, in her honor. I like to name eponyms after my fellows. So if these will show up on boards down the road, then, then future generations of Durham and Path residents will hate me, but oh well, I don't care. So, um, and yeah, the other thing is that sometimes the epidermis doesn't only grow, but also we get growth of adnexal structures, particularly hair follicles. So you get, this is like the germinative matrical cells that are growing and then they begin to develop some outer root sheath um, uh, features. So you get kind of basal palisading. You can get some glycogenation and clearing of the cytoplasm here like that. That's outer root sheath. And the way you tell that this is not a basal cell carcinoma, for one thing, anything that looks like a basal over a dermatofibroma, the answer is not basal cell carcinoma. The answer is benign follicular induction. That's the general rule that I teach, that if you think it's basal over DF, it's probably not. It's probably induction. And this is a well-known phenomenon. The thing I find really helpful is this. See how the stroma, these, these rounded cells, they clump right up next to the basaloid nest and hug it, just like you see in the stroma of a hair follicle tumor, like a trichoepithelioma or a trichoblastoma. And you can even see little like papillary mesenchymal bodies sometimes, which is what this is kind of on its way to becoming, little rounded cells pushing into those basaloid nests. So that's really helpful to me. Um, and, you know, usually there's not clefting and mucin like you'd see in a true basal cell. Sometimes you can get a little clefting, but, but usually there's, there's more of the stroma hugging tightly against the stuff. But here's what's cool about this case. This is actually not uh, anything fancy, although you're right, there are some things that look a little gland. Like this is just a kind of ugly basal cell carcinoma. But clearly this is not induction. This is truly a, a cancer here. And the palisading is a little vague, but you can see palisading in some areas and kind of a more mucin-rich stroma. And certainly cytologically, this tumor is malignant, even has a little bit of necrosis. So this was a very, very um, unusual example of an actual true basal cell carcinoma 
that's colliding with a dermatofibroma. And what I love about the case is that not, it breaks the rule that I always teach. And if you do derm path long enough, all the rules you teach will eventually get broken. And this is true of all parts of pathology. But um, so I always say don't diagnose basal over DF, but I've, I've seen a couple now that were true or in my opinion, true basal cells over dermatofibromas. And in this one, I thought it was really fascinating because this tumor had actual, not only basal cell carcinoma, but actually had really nice follicular induction. You could, oh, here, this is one where you get, see this? This is actually like making a little hair papilla or papillary mesenchymal body. And it's actually forming like an actual little well-formed hair root, see? And sometimes you can also see sebaceous growth, gland growth, like sebaceous induction, either with the follicle or by itself. I've seen ones that you know, sometimes the derm residents will send in as like DF versus sebaceous uh, neoplasm. And it's because it's a DF with lobules of, of sebaceous induction with hyperplasia. So I've seen that a handful of times. Pretty cool. So I kind of wonder if maybe did the basal induction go bad and turn into the basal cell carcinoma? Or is this just a pure coincidence? And I have no answer for that. But I just think it's so cool to be able to see this. What you guys were seeing that look kind of like glands is just the pseudoglandular pattern or what sometimes people call the adenoid pattern of mucin forming little pools within the basal cell carcinoma. And basal cell carcinomas can run a really wide range of features, as I'm sure you all know. Sometimes they have relatively bland nuclear features. Other times they can be very ugly or even frankly, pleomorphic, and it doesn't appear that the cytologic features of basal uh, predict how it's going to behave. The real ugly ones don't like suddenly behave more aggressively. Obviously, the pattern of growth is what matters more. This is kind of more of a nodular pattern overall. Um, so I would expect that this is going to end up actually having a good prognosis. I never did find follow-up in this case, and this was also from, from years ago, but uh, I thought this was a pretty fun uh, example. All right.